Hello, welcome back to God's Zimmer. Today we'll be looking into the structure of the sarcoma, a continuation of the structure of the sarcoma. So in our previous video, we discussed how um, the proteins in the body, like the actins, the myosin, and other cytoskeletal proteins are arranged in the sarcoma. So in today, we're talking more about the cytoskeletal proteins and their clinical importance. Now, so in today's video, we'll start off with the desmin, all right? So we discussed desmin in our previous video. All right, and we see the function of desmin. So this protein here, this protein are indicated in this brown line here. Okay, this protein, the brown line, is known as desmin. So let me just write it here again. All right, so this protein is known as desmin. All right. So this protein called desmin, what it actually does is it anchors or it runs through like the whole um um Z disk. So this desmin uh, runs through like this whole Z disk. What it does it it holds the z discs together all right so it keeps the z disc in shape so that's a function of desmin all right so desmin with the aid of another protein known as what plectin so this protein here is known as plectin so this protein are indicated as this red um circular structure this red circular structure here is known as what plectin is known as what plectin so desmin with the aid of plectin holds the uh, or anchors the, the z disc together so let me just write it here so this structure here is in as what plectin plectin all right so there's mean with the aid of plectin anchors the z disc together and keeps it in shape this is the function of desmin and this protein here known as what plectin all right and as i said earlier this um lines here i drew at the desmin and they run through the whole um um, Z disc. All right. Now the other proteins here I'll be talking about is this other one I drew in pink. All right. This protein here is known as anchoring. This protein here is known as anchoring. So let me just write it here. Anchoring. Anchoring. All right. So, ankarin is a cytoskeletal, a membrane or uh, transmembrane cytoskeletal protein. Okay, you must have heard of ankarin in, in the blood also. Okay, that the lack of ankarin in the blood um, causes um, hereditary cytosis. All right. So now, ankarin anchors this desmin. Okay, ankarin anchors desmin to what to the sarcolemma. So this structure is known as the sarcolemma. Okay, right. So this is a sarcolemma. I told you that the membrane. In our first video on the muscle physiology, I said that the membrane of the muscle, okay, of the muscle fiber is known as sarcolemma. So this is the sarcolemma. So this is the sarcolemma. So this is the membrane of the muscle fiber known as what sarcolemma. All right. And this structure here is known as what anchor ring. Anchor ring. I said anchor ring what anchors the desmin to what to the um saco lemma that's the function of anchoring all right and i said there's mean with the aid of plectin what holds the or anchors the z disc of different sarcomas together it holds them together all right now let's look at another important what cytoskeletal protein known as what dystrophin this circular um structure here is known as what dystrophin dystro I think I should write that in the in the red pen. Okay, so this structure here is known as what dystrophin. Dystrophin. All right. So this is dystrophin. So dystrophin is actually pencil shaped or rod shaped. All right. It is pencil shaped or rod shaped. What it does is what it holds what the actin. It attaches this the actin what to the membrane. Okay. It actually. A kind of a communication between the myofibrillar system with what with the basal lamina so here this structure here please this structure here is known as what the basal lamina this is the basal lamina all right now diastrophin comes here i said what it is a very important what cytoskeletal protein what this dystrophin does is what it connects what the actin this is the actin 
okay it connects the acting world to this um um complex here this these are complex of proteins found was scattered along the sarcolemma so these are complex of proteins scattered along the sarcolemma we call them what the disulfin related or complexes or disulfin related glycoprotein complexes all right disulfin related um glycoprotein complexes so these are proteins that are scattered along what the sarcolemma all right so the disulfin connects the actin to what to these complexes and it's a link what between what the homofibular system what with the basa lamina remember here we have the extracellular matrix all right so this is the extracellular matrix all right now let's talk about these complexes all right let's talk about these complexes our after finish of um, this complexes, we'll talk about the importance of these proteins here all right the, all these proteins we've mentioned they are very very important okay so if you've not watched some of the scene the videos on these other proteins please make sure you watch the video on these other proteins and the cytoskeletal proteins all right so that you follow up with this one all right so this is diastrophin so this um here is what is known as what a very important protein okay it has five complexes this is the alpha okay subunit all right so this is the beta subunit sorry this is the beta subunit this is the alpha subunit this is the beta subunit this is the gamma subunit and here we have the delta subunit all right this is known as what the cycloglycan this is called the cycloglycan so this here is Sarcoglycan. This is called sarcoglycan. All right. Now, sarcoglycan has five subunits: beta, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So these are the five subunits of sarcoglycan: the beta subunit, the alpha subunit, the beta subunit, the gamma subunit, and also the delta subunit. So this um, diastrophin attaches what to cycle glycan okay it attaches to psychoglycan not only psychoglycan it also comes here what and attaches what to this other complex so this other protein complex here all right so this complex here this complex here is known as syntrophin syntrophin this complex is known as syntrophin it attaches to the syntrophin and this syntrophin and what attaches what to another protein here this protein is known as Dystrobrevin. This protein here is known as dystrobrevin. Dystrobrevin. All right. Dystrobrevin. These are very important. These are these proteins are very very important. Okay, because a, a mutation or an absence of dystrophin will cause what a very severe illness in the human body. We we'll talk about that and the clinical importance. All right. So so the dystrophin comes attaches what to the cycloglycan. And I said the cycloglycan has have five has five subunits: beta, alpha, beta, gamma, um, delta. All right, and it also what attaches what to the syntrophin, and this is attaches what to the diastrobrevin. So these are the syntrophin pro um, 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 proteins, and this is the diastrobrevin protein. Now the cycloglycan comes what and attaches what to a different protein complex here, known as what diastroglycan. So this protein complex here is known as what? Dystroglycan. 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 Okay, this is the alpha. All right. This is alpha subunit of what? Of dystroglycan. The alpha subunit of what? Dystroglycan. And what? And I say dystroglycan comes down here. Attaches what? To a different protein that comes what? That is that acts as an indirect link between what the um, diastrophin and the what and the um basa lamina i said what the diastrophin what has to link what, with the basa lamina indirectly through what through this transmembrane proteins okay remember diastrophin what connects what with the sarcoglycan okay it also connects what this um um, um, um syntrophin and also diastrobrevin and also what the sarcoglycan comes out and attaches what to the diastro um glycan and the dashoglycan attaches what to this other protein here known as what laminin okay and laminin what attaches what to the basa lamina all right so this is what no this protein here is known as what laminin is known as what lamin laminin all right so this is laminin 
All right. So laminin attaches what the diastroglycan what to the basa lamina. So these complexes are very very important. So let me go over them before we move to the, what the clinical importance of these proteins. Okay. Now I said that was that desmin, okay, and plectin helps what to keep the shape or anchor the Z disc together. So this protein here, this brown protein here, is known as desmin, and the red ones here is known as what plectin. All right. This is known as what plectin. Thing. And I said what now that desmin is anchored what to the um, sarcolemma by what a protein known as what anchorin. This um, semicircle um, protein I drew here, this one drawn on, in the pink color. All right, this is known as anchorin. So anchorin helps what anchor the desmin what to the sarcolemma. All right, and the other one we talked about was was diastrophin. I said diastrophin comes here. All right, attaches this. Um, actin, all right. I thought this actin what to this complex to this diastrophin related glycoprotein complex, all right. So that's the name of all these um, um, proteins I just mentioned. So instead of calling their single name, so you can just call them diastrophin related glycoprotein complex, all right. That's the general name for all of them, all right. So that, that is what to the cyclglycan. The cyclglycan, I said, has five subunits. Beta, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, all right? And the cyclglycan also attaches what to the diastroglycan, the alpha subunit of the diastroglycan. And also the one that the diastrophin comes on and attaches what to the centrophin, and the centrophin attaches what to diastrobrevin, all right? And the same word now, this diastroglycan comes here and attaches what to this um, protein known as what laminin, and the laminin what links what to the basa lamina, all right? So this are the proteins of the sarcoma. All right. So now let's move into the clinical importance of these proteins. So you may be wondering, all these proteins we've just mentioned, the nebulin, the alpha actinine, the desmin, ankarin, diastrophene. What are the importance of these um, cytoskeletal proteins? What are the importance of these cytoskeletal proteins? Yes, they have clinical importance. So in this video, I've mentioned what um, the importance of the cytoskeletal protein. So I'll be starting off with desmin. I'll be starting off with desmin. So let's um, come here. Let's come here. Um, desmin. All right. Let's start with desmin. Okay. So I'll, I think I'll be cleaning up some things. I'll be cleaning up some things. Okay. Let me clean up this side because I'll be using both sides. All right. All right. So let's talk about the desmin. What is the clinical importance of desmin? All right. So desmin is very important in what in a condition known as what desmin related myopathy (DRM). Okay. Desmin related myopathy. Let me just write it to full. Desmin related myo. Path. See, all right. So desmin is very important. What in desmin-related myopathy (DRM)? What is desmin-related myopathy? So desmin-related myopathy is a rare condition. Okay, is a rare um, condition where desmin. Remember, desmin is a filamentous cytoskeletal protein. Desmin is a filamentous cytoskeletal protein. So when the des gene, that is the gene for that codes for what. Or desmin is known as what the des gene all right so let me just write it here code by what the des gene code by what the des gene all right so so codes by the des gene so when the des gene all right the, if there's a mutation in this des gene and what we find that we can make more filamentous desmin all right we can make more filamentous bending so we start making what this the desmin we're making are aggregated together all right, they are aggregated together, so they cannot no longer what carry out what the function of keeping what the um, Z disc uh, anchoring them together and keeping them in shape. All right, so if this desmin is what is um, the gene from desmin is mutated. All right, so desmin becomes what aggregated. It can no longer be filamentous, and what find that there will be a disorganized what myofibrillar system. There will be a disorganized what um, um, cytoskeletal what. 
proteins, all right? So that's the importance of theirs, me. So when there's a disorganized atoskeletal um, um, protein um, muscles in the human body, that's a very big problem, all right? So that's a very big problem, all right? So this is characterized by what um, several clinical symptoms. First of all, is the weakness of the muscle because now, since there's a disorganized um, ment of this whole myofibrillar system, then the proteins are, or the muscles of this um, human what will be disorganized they will be very weak all right because there's disorganization of this whole protein so first of all we start with what weakness all right so we start with what with weakness of the leg muscles so first of all we start with weakness of the leg muscles that's the first thing you notice in the patient with what desmi related myopathy is what weakness of the leg muscle weakness of leg muscles all right so after weakness of leg muscles it will be followed by what weakness of muscles of trunk muscles of the trunk muscles of the trunk all right and other what and other parts of the body and other parts of the body all right so weakness of the leg muscles that's the first symptom we see in this patient okay weakness of the leg muscles then followed by what weakness of the uh, muscles of the trunk and other parts of the body so these are the first symptoms we see in desmi related myopathy just a single word a single cytoskeletal protein you think it's not important okay but these proteins are very very important in the human body all right now because there's um there's been related myopathy also affects what the smooth muscles okay it also affects what the smooth muscles and also the cardiac muscles all right because it affects smooth muscles so affecting the smooth muscles affecting the smooth and um, cardiac muscles and cardiac muscles okay you could have what other symptoms such as what such as respiratory failure or respiratory um or respiratory insufficiency all right respiratory failure we could have what um impairment in the gastrointestinal remember i said what the smooth muscles in our first video i said the smooth muscles what makes up what the muscles of your intestine the muscles of your stomach all right so since there's no related myopathy also affect what smooth muscles do could be what impairment of what of the gastrointestinal tract function all right so we could have what we could have what impairment impairment of impairment of what the gi gastrointestinal what function all right and since it affects cardiac muscles okay we could have what what we could have heart failure all right and this what could possibly lead to what leads to death all right so there's no related um myopathy okay is caused by what a defect in the death gene okay the death gene this one is the gene that calls for what there's mean all right so instead of producing filamentous there's mean we are producing what an, an aggregate there's mean all right an aggregate there's mean and this cannot what longer function in the human body so it leads what to the disorganization of what of the myofibular system and the muscle what becomes weak first of all we notice weakness in the leg muscles the full the weakness of the muscles of the trunk and other parts of the body and because this there's been also um, related myopathy is also um, affect smooth muscles and cardiac muscles we could have heart failure which could lead to death and we could have what impairment of the gastrointestinal function all right and also respiratory failure or respiratory um, insufficiency so this is the importance of what of this mean you got a little protein what with much importance all right so let's move to the other one known as what diastrophin so i'll be talking more on on what on diastrophin again diastrophin very very important so you might have heard of diastrophin all right so diastrophin diastrophin um diastrophin diastrophin all right Diastrophin 
is um, the uh, a basic cytoskeletal protein that is what is defective or absent in actually um, muscular dystrophy. So you must have a head of muscular dystrophy. All right. So muscular dystrophy is what is either what we are lacking what the dystrophin it is totally absent or there's a defect in the dystrophin cytoskeletal protein. Very very important. Remember, if this dystrophin is lacking in an individual, let's let's think about what really happened. If this dystrophin is lacking in an individual, what will happen? Remember, I said what this my fibrillar system, home my fibrillar system, okay, specifically and, and the actin what it anchors what this my fibrillar system and the actin what to the what to the sarcolemma and also what it communicates to the extracellular matrix, assuming that this that this dystrophin is not here. What will happen what to the ions, the proteins, the enzymes that are found in the extracellular matrix? What will happen? First of all, absence of this dystrophin will cause what will cause the um breakdown of this sarcolemma the um, plasma membrane of the muscle fiber okay so if there's a breakdown of the plasma membrane of the sarcolemma with the sarcolemma there's a breakdown of this um, plasma membrane what will happen the content of the extracellular matrix the content of the extracellular matrix what and also the content of what remember the basal lamina all right the basal lamina what we also what we also break down because what it holds everything together, all right? It holds everything together. So there will be an influx of what there's an influx of what ions of proteins of different enzymes into what into the cell, okay? There will be an influx of different proteins, different enzymes into the cell, and this what and this can cause what what is called as muscular diastrophy. So the cell becomes what fibrotic. Okay, and it's replaced by fatty tissue. It becomes fibrotic and it's replaced by fatty tissue. So this condition is known as what muscular diastrophy. All right. So this is what will happen. So muscular diastrophy. There are different types of muscular diastrophy. Okay, I'll be going over different types of muscular diastrophy. I'll be listing them, but specifically, I'll be talking more about three um, types of muscular diastrophy. Okay, but I'll just list all, but I'll talk basically about. Um, Three of them, all right. First of all, we have the Duchenne, the Duchenne muscular dystrophy MD, or abbreviated as MD muscular dystrophy, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, all right. I'll also have the Baker muscular dystrophy MD, all right. We have what the fascio scapulo humera muscular dystrophy, fascio scapulo. Humera muscular dystrophy. All right, this is also known as Landazi Dejerin syndrome. All right, we we'll also have the Emeridrifus, Emeridrifus muscular dystrophy MD. All right, we also have the myotonic, myotonic muscular dystrophy. All right, we have also the Oculo uh, pharyngeal pharyngeal muscular diastrophy. There are different types of muscular diastrophy. All right, so I can't just start listing them. All right, so in this video, I'll be discussing about the Duchenne muscular diastrophy, the Becker muscular diastrophy, the Fasciscapulo humera muscular diastrophy, and maybe I could just throw a little light on my thing muscular diastrophy. So if you really want to know about muscular diastrophy, you can um, just uh, pick up your um, the um, pathology textbooks and you read them up from your pathology textbooks, all right? So when we talk about what's that um, treating pathology, we'll go into more details about this muscular, different types of muscular diastrophy. But two common ones, the two common ones are Duchenne and Baker, all right? Though um, fascial scapula humera is not that common, but it's also um, um, a, a case, all right? So let's start with now with Duchenne muscular diastrophy. Duchenne muscular diastrophy. Okay, now, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is very severe. It's very, very severe. You know why it's severe? It is severe because the gene, now, diastrophin is totally absent in this patient. Diastrophin is totally absent 
in this patient all right so the gene that actually calls for it is actually what defective all right there's a mutation so this the diastrophin is not produced at all so there's a total absence of what diastrophin all right so let me just write it here all right so for don't chain don't chain don't chain so what you should know about the chain is what one total absent absent of diastrophin okay absence of diastrophin that the gene that cause for it is totally absent all right it's totally absent so diastrophin is not produced at all all right remember the chain is x linked okay it is x linked it, means it is sex link all right it is says linked okay it is sex linked all right and the gene that codes for it is actually found on the sp21.2 locus of the short arm of the s chromosome all right so the says linked and the gene that codes for it is found on what on the short arm on the short arm of the s chromosome chromosome okay specifically the um sp21.2 locus all right so this is where we find the gene that calls for so it is cess linked it means what uh, since it's found on the x chromosome it means it only affects what males it mainly affects males all right it mainly affects males don't forget that all right so the next point we'll have to be looking at is now the age of the onset okay the onset of the disease onset okay is at what at the age of what five at the age of five so the a disease what starts showing its symptoms at what at the age of five in boy in boys okay at the age of five in boys and it's very very severe right so it is severe let's make that very important because that is how we can differentiate what um don chen and baker baker is less severe all right it is neither all right so um don chen is very severe okay since it is severe all right since it is severe it leads what to a degenerative degeneration of what of the muscles of what of the body the degeneration of the muscles of the body and these muscles of the body are replaced by what by fibrotic and what fatty tissues by fibrotic and fi fatty tissues so since they are replaced by fibrotic and fatty tissue we could see what what is called the calf pseudo hypertrophy in this patient remember that your calf muscles are the bulk of the gastronomics the gastronomic muscles all right so the bulk of the gastronomics what you find out that a child with um, um let's say before the age of five one of the the gastronomic muscle all right becomes very very large okay that is hypertrophy all right it is called pseudo hypertrophy because you'll be thinking oh this child is actually getting fat or the leg of this child is actually getting bigger right but it's not actually what real or muscle tissues these are fatty fibrotic tissues okay that's why it's called pseudo hypertrophy all right though it is increasing in size but this is not real increase all right so we could find what symptoms you can see what symptoms let me write the symptoms here all right symptoms 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 all right we could see um calf pseudo hypertrophy calf pseudo hypertrophy all right so this since this child have calf pseudo hypertrophy most of them wouldn't be able to work to work properly all right most of them wouldn't be able to work properly all right so most of them will fall in all right so frequent falls okay inability to walk even some children could not cannot actually work even up, up to the age of 12 years old all right so this is don't um muscular diastrophy all right so um Patients with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, most of them cannot actually live to the age of um, 2025. Okay, so they cannot have a normal life. All right, because they of the absence of diastrophin, what cytoskeletal protein. All right. Now, this um, calf pseudo hypertrophy is seen in patients with Duchenne. All right. We could also see, we could also see some some other what some other symptoms in these patients. 
okay we could also see some other um, symptoms in this patient such as what respiratory insufficiency respiratory insufficiency all right respiratory insufficiency because now remember the muscles are affected the muscles of what of your breathing muscles like your um like your um, diaphragm what is affected okay we have respiratory insufficiency uh, we also have here um pulmonary infection pulmonary infection so this pulmonary infection what arises due to what a decrease due to decreased what mucociliary clearance mucociliary clearance all right so we could have what symptoms we can see in induction was a muscular dystrophy you what calf pseudo hypertrophy respiratory insufficiency pulmonary infection due to what mucociliary decrease what mucociliary clear runs okay we could also see because it affects the heart muscles okay because also we could also see okay um cardio cardio myo okay we also see what cardio myo -pathy. so these are the things we can see in Duchenne. so let me quickly go over the before move into bekas okay we said Duchenne, well it is what an s-linked what um traits okay it's an s-linked disorder okay because it is found on the s chromosome specifically on the sp21.2 locus of the s chromosome all right and we say what it's onset is at the age of five and patient with good chen what cannot live up to the age of 20 25 years of age okay and it's caused by what they by the total absence of what the diastrophin protein total absence of diastrophin protein i would say it is very very severe it is very very severe and due to the degeneration of the muscle um tissues it is replaced by what fibrotic and fatty tissues okay and we could have what calf pseudo hypertrophy and this could lead to what to frequent falls okay and inability to walk even at the age up to the age of 12 years old okay so we also have respiratory failure because these affect the breathing muscles okay you have respiratory failures and we also have what pulmonary consultancy pulmonary infection due to what decreased mucociliary clearance remember the beating of the cilia um of the lungs okay um carries out these these um uh, uh waste or kind of debris in the lungs so will beat them up okay to the um, um bronchial um, tracheal bronchial trees okay and we, we can either curve them out and speed them out or we swallow them back all right so the, due to decrease of auxiliary clearance okay we could develop pulmonary infection and because this um muscular dystrophy affect what they have the cardiac, cardiac muscles we could count or we could also will develop cardiomyopathy so this is um, the presentation of what uh, the symptoms of what uh, doing chain muscular diastrophy Dunchen muscular diastrophy so now let's move into what uh, baker muscular diastrophy baker muscular diastrophy so i'm going to wipe here off now so we'll move into baker muscular diastrophy so now let's talk about the baker's muscular diastrophy baker's muscular diastrophy baker's muscular diastrophy now baker's muscular diastrophy is just like what i said initially it is less severe compared to what Duchenne muscular diastrophy so baker muscular diastrophy okay we can have this onset okay of this disease within the age of 11 okay and 25 all right within the age of 11 and 25 that's the onset of the disease okay it is less severe let's make that work clear now it is less severe okay it is less severe all right and we say what now it is also sex linked just like don chen okay it is also sex linked also it is sex linked it is sex linked it is sex linked right and say so what it also affects what the respiratory muscles it also affects what the muscles of the hip it's okay it affects what respiratory muscles respiratory um muscles okay it also affects what the muscles of the hip muscles of the hip okay of the pelvics 
k of the pelvix and what and lower limb lower limb so this is the presentation of what of the chain of muscular um baker's muscular dystrophy okay you say what well, the onset of the disease is between what the age of 11 and 25 okay it is less severe compared what to the chain it is also cess linked it also affects respiratory muscles okay and muscles of the hip the pelvis and the lower limb all right so this is baker's muscular diastrophy all right so let's move now into the fasciocapulohumeral muscular dystrophy okay fasciocapulohumeral muscular diastrophy all right so this is fasciocapulohumeral i'm abbreviating that fsh muscular diastrophy all right so Fasciocapulohumera, what comes to your mind? The fasciocapulohumera is what? Muscular dystrophy. It's a muscular dystrophy that affects the face, the muscles of the face, the muscles of your scapula, and the muscles of what? Of your upper arm. All right? So that's just it, okay? This is also known as what? This is also called, also called Laudanzi de Gerin syndrome, okay? Also called, also called Laudanzi the Jerine syndrome okay landage the Jerine syndrome all right and remember it is not sex linked it is not sex linked it is not sex linked compared to compared to what Baker's and Dunchen okay it is what it is it is Autosoma, it is inherited in an autosoma dominant. An autosoma dominant what way? So it is inherited in an autosoma dominant way, which means what the parents must must have it. Alright, so uh, assuming um we make a cross link, okay. Let's say this is the defective gene for fasciocapular fascio humera and muscular dystrophy. Let's say this is the father, okay, with the with the Disease okay, the father, father has what first scapula humera uh, muscular dystrophy, and let's say this is the normal um gene for all right, the normal gene for okay. This so crossing this, what we have what is a 50% chance of what of the child having um the disease okay. Crossing this, we have what a 50% chance of the child having it okay, and this moving to this. Okay, and this to this here we have right. So here we have what now? Fifty percent chance of what of the child having it. So this is what an autosomal dominant um um pattern of of, of inheritance. So fasciocapulohumera muscular dystrophy is what it is not cess linked. It is what it is what inherited what in an autosomal dominant what pattern or autosomal dominant way. The quick means what. The parents, one of the parents, what must have this disease, not a carrier, all right? It is not a carrier, but the parents what, must have the disease, what in order for the child what, to come down with this disease. So that is what's called fasciocapulohumera muscular dystrophy. And here it affects what the muscles of the face, okay? Muscles of, of the face, this is what muscles around the scapula muscles around the scapula the scapula okay remember the scapula is what is triangular in shape all right it is what at the back side of your body okay this is the scapula okay that are well, affect muscles what around the scapula it's also affect what muscles of the upper arm of the upper arm all right so these are the muscles it affects then as the disease progresses, okay, as it progresses, it what it then affects other muscles of the body. All right. So as the disease progresses, okay, as the disease progresses, it affects what other muscles of the body. But first of all, it affects what the muscles of the face. The muscles around the scapula, the muscles of what of the upper arm, and as the disease progresses, 
it is what it's what it affects other muscles of the body remember fascia scapula humera muscular dystrophy is also known as um, Dandanji um, Dejerine syndrome, okay? Dandanji Dejerine syndrome, okay? It is not cell link, it is what it is inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern, all right? And we say what? It affects most of the face, the muscles around the scapula, the muscles of the upper arm, then it progresses as it progresses, what it affects muscles on the other part of the body. So this is fascia scapula humera muscular diastrophy. This is all we have to know about it. So more information will be given under the videos in pathology all right so now looking at what this other muscular dystrophy we can see what myotonic muscular dystrophy oculopharynge and meridifus so these are all different types of muscular dystrophy so you can read them up all right so for myotonic muscular dystrophy okay we can have what um weakness of the muscles of the face also is also called is also found in this um, um in this patient all right we can also have um cataracts all right in this patient and also weakness of the muscles of the limbs all right so so this is just myotonic muscular dystrophy so one i also had focused in this in this video what we are duncan becker's fascia scapula humera okay because these are the most common type of muscular dystrophy so let me quickly go over it again because um before we round up this video now muscular dystrophy okay do we are talking about the clinical importance of what dystrophy and we say what now dystrophin is important because absence of what dystrophin what can cause what muscular dystrophy and we said what different type of muscular dystrophy here and we say what don't change the most severe um, type of muscular dystrophy is caused by a total absence of what muscular uh, of the dystrophin um due to what a defect what in the dystrophin gene all right and we say what it is cell linked which it is found on the short arm of the s chromosome specifically on the 21.2 locus of the um uh, x chromosome and we say what now it also is at the age of five and it's very very severe okay and the symptoms you can see in this patient what calf pseudo hypertrophy because these um muscles are replaced by um fibrotic and, and fatty tissues okay we can also have respiratory insufficiencies or okay, we also have um pulmonary um diseases due to what decreased mucosillary clearance we okay, also have uh, cardiomyopathy i will come coming back here we'll talk about baker's what muscular diastrophy and we see what the onset is between what the age of 11 and 25 it is less severe okay it also says linked okay it is also says linked all right so just like um don't chen, it is also says linked just like don't chen, all right so the difference is that don't chen is severe and baker's is what is less severe it is less severe and it affects what most of the hip the pelvis the lower limb all right so this is for baker and this is for Dunchen muscular diastrophy i'll uh, come in here we talked about the fascia scapula humera muscular dystrophy also known as what lambda z dejerine syndrome and we say what now it is autosomal dominant it is not cess linked okay which means the father uh will pass it what to the um children um all right and so we affect most of the face muscles around the scapula muscles of the upper arm all right so these are the muscles it Effect. okay we can also have okay let's i forget mm, very important very very important so it affects this muscle but it also affects what it also cause something very very important it's also called dilation dilation of the blood vessels blood vessels of the retina of the retina almost forgot that yes and this is known as what retina telangiectasia retina telangiectasia all right retina telangiectasia the dilation of the blood vessels of the retina so it causes dilation of the blood vessels of the retina known as what retina telangiectasia these are what the features of uh, muscular dystrophy so you see how important the satoskeletal proteins um are very very important in the human body just dystrophy can cause what this disease all right just dystrophy i will talk about desmin too how important desmin is desmin related what myopathy how important it is so these proteins here are very 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 important we talked about the clinical importance already of nebulin all right that 
absence of this nebulin what the acting what becomes very very unlocated okay and absence of triple modeling all right you have what more attachment of what g what acting on what on this acting and becomes very very what elongated all right i'll talk about what the action of plectin okay with with this so these are the clinical importance of this cytoskeletal protein so if you really enjoyed this video please don't forget to click the subscribe button and comment in the comment section below and don't forget to share with your friends